Hey, good morning everybody and happy Monday. Woo -woo. <laughs> I want to explain a few things first of all when I start this video. Um, some of you might have wondered, I never really thought about it until today, but uh, you, you might wonder why I'm wearing, why I have the tank top on, the gloves and everything when I make these videos. It's about 3 o'clock in the morning now. I, I get up really early to work out. It's, it became part of my recovery and it's become a new addiction, but I've tried to make the videos before, uh, before I start working out, it, you know, this is, this is, because I've been working out for about 10 minutes now, I uh, started doing curls this morning, but uh, anyway, I've tried making the videos before or after I started working out, and I just, it doesn't flow as well, I don't think, I don't think as well, I'm thinking a little slow already this morning, but it, well, my blood gets going. And I started putting things together, and it, it just feels to come together better once I'm active. And then it, it feels like uh, the, the video goes better once I, I'm moving around and active. I don't know, it works for me. So that, that's why I'm wearing this now. It's not, it has nothing to do with the video. It's just convenient for me at 3 in the morning. So that's why. I put a couple of videos on before this. Uh, with a cat in it, this cat rush that I, I have, I love, I've come to love. Um, the cat is my, this is hard, this is complicated. It's uh, an ex-girlfriend, a friend, and a possible future girlfriend, again. Uh, we're very, we, 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 we we were boyfriend and girlfriend back in third or fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, and it's a long story, but anyway, it's her cat. Maybe I'll make a video explaining that relationship more in the future, but uh, it's not going to become an all cat channel. If, for, if, if that cat rush shoots to take off or something, I can make another channel for him. But <laughs> I just wanted to explain the, the three cat videos before this. All right, this video is about the last time I had a, a drink. And do I miss it? Last time I had any alcohol, and do I miss it? Because I, I know, if somebody asked me years ago, you know, when I was drinking, if, uh, like, that's, that's, that'd be the hardest thing to give up. Everybody drinks, it's socially acceptable. You know, you go to the bar, you go out with your buddies, Christmas, New Year's, how, how, how can you possibly not have a drink? You know, everybody might, you know, everybody has, everybody has a drink. All right, I, I don't remember the exact day I had the last drink. It was over, my, my 13 year recovery date is October 23rd, 2006. I'm coming up on that. I used crack that day. That was my a video before this, what I did about. Uh, I used alcohol last before that. Oh, probably 13 years or more ago. Uh, I don't quite remember. I remember my last day that I ever used drugs. But alcohol was about two months before that. Uh, I used alcohol to... I'll explain it. I started drinking back in my teen years, of course, like everybody. I remember being so drunk that I couldn't do my paper route. My mother had to do my paper when I was fall down drunk. I, I don't even remember. I woke up. I came to at about 9 o'clock at night uh, throwing up all over myself with my mother looking like she was going to kill me, like she was going to beat my ass. Um, I, I drank. I, I was naturally an introvert when I was younger, and I am now. See, now I accept who I am, and I, I don't try to be anybody else. But back then, I tried to be more outgoing. You know, like as as any teen does, uh, and I used it especially when I went on dates. Uh, you know, to as a, as a social lubricant, as they say. You know, especially with girls. Or, you know, um, so I drank more and more in high school. It became a, a total a weekend thing. I drank a lot. I drank so much, in fact, that I went to a keg party back when I was about, I was 20. Okay, and I just started using cocaine. I didn't have any cocaine. And see, people that use and drink will understand this. Um, cocaine balances out alcohol. When you drink a lot and then you do cocaine, it, it brings you back down. You stay drunk, but you, you're more alert. 
you're not as you know you're not as stagger you don't stagger you don't say your words you cut you pop back awake it's like drinking a hundred cups of coffee so addicts and alcoholics like me or you know recover past alcoholics and, and addicts like me uh would often combine the two and they, they become inseparable um you, you'll drink first relax your relax yourself and then once you start getting a little too sleepy you know once the alcohol starts hitting a little hard then you do some coke and it levels you out it's yeah it's it wasn't a good thing i remember 21 okay when i, I went to this keg party um uh, i didn't have any cocaine i got totally slipped all down drunk and i threw up and i drank more and i threw up and i drank more and i threw up and i drank more and i threw up i i was working as a draftsman in an architectural office then I, I I was doing good in life. Uh, the drugs and alcohol worked their way in. It took a while. So yeah, at 20, at 20 years old, I had already graduated from a technical school and I was working for an architect. Uh, the youngest guy ever to work there. Designing bank found, uh, a foundation for a bank in the Litchfield, the town around here. Anyway, uh, I felt nauseous at work the next day. And... I ran to the bathroom and threw up, and it was blood. I filled the the, the, the toilet up with blood. And it's like, I went back out, and I told the, my boss I better go to the walk-in center. At that point, I wasn't that worried. I was like, cool, I'm going to get out of work because I felt I had a wicked hangover. Once I got to the walk-in center, once I drove there, I didn't even quite make it through the door. And I, I threw up on the curb, and it was more blood, lots of blood, lots and lots of blood. I started feeling dizzy. I felt nauseous again. I ran past the nurse at the desk and right into a, uh, I found a bathroom, ran into a bathroom, threw up, filled the sink with blood. I remember looking up at my face in the mirror and it was white. It was a ghostly white and I was starting to feel good, warm. I felt like I was going home. Seriously, I'll get into that in another video. And it was blue underneath my eyes and I, I was dying. I, I was bleeding out. Uh, it's I can't talk about that too much or <laughs> I get emotional. Yeah, and the ambulance came. I was in intensive care for four or five days. Um, came close to dying. I, I had to enter tubes down me and everything, pumping out my stomach for days. No, I couldn't. I couldn't touch it. I couldn't drink or not even have a drop of water. A terrible, terrible time. Uh, I cried. Oh, I'll never drink again. Two weeks later, I was drinking again. Uh, yeah, so alcohol was... I, I was a big drinker. I was a big drinker. And then the cocaine came in. I drank, I used, I drank, I used. In the last days of my... See, I, I quit heroin and drinking about the same time. And this is why. Um, in the later days, the alcohol became... I would wake up in the morning... And as any heroin addict, I'd, I'd be almost on the edge of sick as soon as you wake up. It's just it's part of being a heroin addict. You could do as you could do 20 bags the day before. You're still going to wake up sick the next morning. It's a ter terrible. It's, it's worse. It becomes a job. You ask any heroin addict. It, it's you have to you have to you have to take care of this addiction 24/7. It has to be your number one. Your number one priority, 24-7. Because once that sickness hits, it gets worse. And it gets much worse. It gets so bad that you cannot function. Then you're trapped. Then you're trapped inside the house. On the floor of the bathroom, puking, diarrhea, throwing up all of yourself, shaking, convulsing. And at that point, you really can't go out in public and get more drugs. So you, you got to rush out before it, it gets worse. And this is every day. How, how I let myself, a smart guy supposedly, how I let myself go down this path, I do not know. If it could happen to me, I think it could happen to anybody. But anyway, in the later days, I used alcohol in the morning. This is weird. Uh, I'm not promoting, I'm not glorifying anything. I used to have, I used to drink two shooters. Uh, I would just go right to my package store on my way to, before I got the heroin. I get two shooters of Jägermeister. It had to be Jägermeister. Why? I do not know. And it would calm my nerves. There was a joke, maybe it was psychological, that uh, Jägermeister was like liquid heroin. 
Maybe it was psychological because I tried other alcohol and it didn't. And it would calm my nerves because I would have to go down into some parts and deal with deal with people to get this heroin and go into parts of the city that would, <laughs> would make most people shit their pants. Seriously, you know, and uh, I see doctors, I see people, I see people, nurses in nurses' outfits, guys in suits, all lined up to buy their heroin. Seriously, true story. I'll tell you more about that in another video. Anyway, I would have to have these two shooters of Jaeger every, every morning. Sometimes a whole half pint. Every single morning before the heroin. To, to just get my nerves to kind of stave off. The jittery sickness starting to set in to get me brave enough to go down and get my heroin it was the first thing this is this is 8 30 in the morning as soon then I, I gotta find a way to get money this was every day it was a living and it just and that was the that was the best part of the day it got worse from there man so i drank every day now like i mentioned in the video before this i i started uh medicated uh med medical assisted treatment there's suboxone uh there's a couple other ones there's methadone and it, it worked it worked great for me a small dose and it got to the point where i started to feel normal uh and then one day i realized i didn't need heroin anymore uh, i was buying it anyways to anybody it blocks it blocks the heroin it doesn't the heroin doesn't work you don't get high you just feel normal you don't get sick and you get off the heroin and it works fantastically then you know you have to wean yourself off the methadone but if you do that right that's it's not it's not bad all right the alcohol so yeah in the later days it was that's what it was i was also what i'm trying to say here is i was always a, i was i was a i was a oh, a daily drinker and a lot from a young age for 25 28 years at least uh, last time I drank was the last time I used heroin. I used crack cocaine after that. Like I, like I told you guys in the video before this, um, I had a little relapse here and there. Like uh, I'd be clean for a couple months and I'd go out one day and, and use, use coke or crack and then be clean for another two weeks, one more day. And then I quit that totally. That was October 23rd, 2006. The last day I had alcohol was back in August of 2006. And do I, okay, do I miss it? Not, not one bit. Not one bit. And I, I loved Budweiser. I loved my beer. I had, I had beer mirrors. Loved my beer. I could have two beers. I could have 20 beers. I love beer. You know, and I, I drank with the best of them. Do I miss it? Not, not a bit. You know, did I miss it at first? Nope. I don't know what to tell you. It wasn't, it wasn't that hard. Alcohol wasn't all that hard for me. Um, I have very close friends that were, alcohol was their, what they call their drug of choice. Now, it was probably harder for them. Heroin and crack cocaine were my drugs of choice. So, I was an everyday hard drinker, but I wasn't, it wasn't my drug of choice. Do I miss it? Nope. No, I, I, I am scared. I, I'm, I, the thought of having a drink, when I see somebody on TV, like kids drinking or whatever, it scares the hell out of me. The thought of losing control, of not being me, scares me to death right now. You know, I love who I am. I love this life. I, I, love, I love the second chance I've been given. Um, do I miss it? Not in the least. I, I, I would I'd pay money not to drink right now. I would I would do anything. You'd have to put a gun to my head, and I probably still wouldn't drink. You know, seriously. And it's not about uh, uh, being afraid that I would use it again. It's just I I am terrified of not being myself, who I am right now. I've come to love who I am. Remember, I was telling you guys that I was an introvert, and I tried to be somebody I wasn't, an extrovert. I had to get past that in recovery. I had to love who I am and not want to change it, and I do, I do, and that's why it's worked for me. You know, and when I drink, I'd, I'd lose control and not be this person. And that terrifies me. And I mean that in the true sense of the word, it terrifies me. So now, my, I, it's been uh, over, probably about a, close to a 13 years on the head right now. Today, August uh, 12th. 
Monday, August 12th, I think it is. Um, it's probably been almost exactly 13 years, and I do not miss it. I, lo I love life. Um, it's amazing. I, I just, it's 3 in the morning. I just stepped out on the back porch, totally quiet out there before I started working out. It's beautiful. And I smelled the air out there. I told you guys about smelling the air. And oh my God, I'm just so thankful. I thank God, I swear to God, I thank God every single day. No, I know it sounds corny or whatever, but it's true. I mean, when you've, when you've lived the life I led and come as close as I have to death so many times and just want it, basically want, giving up, just giving up and, and, and asked to die. When you be, when you come back from that, <laughs> life is good, man. I, I just got goosebumps. Life is fan freaking tastic. So that's my video for today. Y'all have a great day.